We end this week with a little alpine musical adventure. So Matt Unplugged claims to be Europe's biggest acoustic festival, and it's an annual event which takes place in Switzerland. We sent Greg McKenzie to discover why some prefer their music at high altitude. Nestled in a deep valley bordering France and Italy, the ski resort of Zermatt is surrounded by 29 alpine giants, making this one of the most popular resorts in the Swiss Alps. And once a year, it becomes the backdrop for Zermatt Unplugged. Well, you can tell everybody, yeah, you can tell everybody, go ahead and tell everybody, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. A week-long music festival dubbed the Glastonbury of the Alps, which attracts more than 20,000 people. Headlining the festival, the US soul singer Aloe Black, who recently scored his second number one hit in the UK singles charts. I loved the experience the first time around. I've had a chance to meet with the promoters. They've come to LA, we've had dinner, and, and just, you know, it's sort of like making a family out of, out of the business, instead of the business coming first. In Zermatt, it's a, it, di it is a different kind of um, relationship with the audience. It's a seated event, so that changes the dynamic about how much energy we put into the music to make people dance. I mean, either way, they're gonna be dancing in their seats. The event, now in its seventh year, aims to offer fans an intimate musical experience. Artists perform live acoustic sets, which helped make this event quite unique, setting it far apart from the many other festivals taking place in ski resorts across Europe and beyond. We wanted to do something that really, that really fits the town, and we think, uh, you know, these smaller stages, these intimate stages, even the big one, you know, pretty close to the art, isn't pretty intimate. And um, I think this fits very well Terma, and that's what somehow makes the magic of the event. One of the main challenges with staging the event, how do you get equipment up a mountain? Because this resort is car free. Simple, use a helicopter. The piano is part of a set for the Ronnie Scott's All Stars, a five-piece jazz band from London who are hoping to break a European altitude record by performing a string of free concerts more than 3,000 metres above sea level. We were looking for something a little different from where the jazz club is, which is in Frith Street in Soho in London. And it's warm and cosy and small and uh, intimate. Uh, and we thought, well, what might be a little different? So we went for this. We've been to Oman, we've been to Dubai, we've been to Hong Kong. Uh, but this is, this is the most uh, left field <laughs> that we've ever pulled together. Many of the concerts take place in venues in the village and at the lower mountain across nine stages. Most are in the evenings, allowing you time to spend all day on the slopes, which is what Zermatt is known for. As a novice and first time I've ever been on a ski slope, I've enlisted the help of a trained instructor for a lesson in how to snowboard. Now, of course, the only way to get around here in Zermatt is by using one of these gondolas. The great thing is, our trip takes about half an hour, which gives us enough time to take in some of these stunning views. So we're about two miles up now, and the altitude makes it quite hard to breathe. So if you're a novice like me, you have to take deep breaths. At first glance, it looks fairly straightforward, or so I thought. <laughs> How do I stop? <laughs> Zermatt attracts more than two million visitors a year. 
It's also a playground for the rich and famous, so you'll need plenty of money to truly enjoy yourself here. But it wasn't always this way. In the early 19th century, the region was known for its agricultural and farming communities. Now, its only industry is tourism. We are now at the end of a long winter season and usually the numbers drop. And thanks of the Zermatt Unplugged, we have again a very strong week, almost fully booked. And it's definitely a big impact for our uh, local economy. And as Zermatt Unplugged comes to an end for yet another year, the focus now turns to staging and planning the week-long event next April.